In this video we're going to look at the basics of road construction but first of all let's look at the different types of roads. There's um, urban roads uh, in cities and towns uh, which have curb and channel um, berms uh, with footpaths and things like that. Um, they have uh, you've got the base course, the, the formation um, consists of the, uh, the surfacing which can be chip seal or um, asphalt or concrete or hot mix um, underneath that is the base course which is AP40 um, a very high quality um, aggregate underneath that will be the subgrade which is AP65 which is less high quality but is there to dis distribute the load and underneath that is the subgrade which is the in situ soil uh, underneath it there's um, subsoil drainage and there may be other services there as well Rural road, much the same design, it's got a seal, um, road pavement um, on a subgrade but uh, oftentimes they don't have that curb and channel there sort of constraining the, um, the base course they have a feather the edge there allowing trucks and cars to actually pull over to the side uh, and then there's a, a table drain collecting the water and transporting it to the um, nearest water course uh, roads also have curves, so um, normally you'll have this uh, cross section here with 3% uh, camber going either way to drain the road. Uh, as you're going around corners um, to make it easier to go around the corner, um, one side will actually raise up to provide super elevation so the car can get around the corner. Uh, and uh, also in cuts, you've got to make sure that they drain as well, so the options are to sort of drain it let it all flow one way um, over the edge or you, maybe you need to put a ditch in there or you put a ditch and a f um, let it overflow in the other one. So all of these things mean that a road is a different shape and there's quite a lot of challenges in being able to construct it uh, in particular sort of laying it all out. Um, no part of it's flat usually um, so there's all these um, different uh, camber and super elevation angles that need to be set out and need to be um, produced when you're making a road. Uh, just a bit of uh, theory for you again, uh, the wheel load there is distributed through the surface to the base course, the base course is high quality, it will um, spread it out a bit more, the sub base will spread it out even more and then it will get down to the subgrades. So the idea of the road pavement there is to spread those uh, loads out a bit so that um, the pressure on the subgrade is such that the subgrade can stand it without deforming or settling or breaking up because if the subgrade settles then the rest of the road is going to settle as well. So the road types, uh, flexible pavement is a subgrade with a sub base, base course and a chip seal on top. Flexible because if that subgrade settles then the top bit's going to settle as well you're going to get potholing. Uh, inexpensive way of doing things um, uh, unbound uh, materials uh, most commonly used in New Zealand because it's the lowest cost way of doing stuff. Uh, you can also normally they say chip seal there but you can actually have a thin layer of uh, asphaltic concrete as well or otherwise known as hot mix um, instead of the chip seal or you can have chip seal with hot mix on top of it. Uh, hot mix has the advantage of being quieter um, because the, um, saw uh, the, the surface is much um, finer. Semi-rigid pavement uses a much thicker layer of asphalt or concrete um, to provide a structural layer as well for the base course. So the base course and the, um, the sub-base can actually be thinner because some of the load is being taken by the, by the um, AC. Uh, in this case here, the flexible pavement, it is assumed that the chip seal or the AC on top there is not taking any load at all. The load's being taken by the base course, sub-base and the subgrade. And a rigid pavement is concrete. Uh, concrete slab, often reinforced, 100-150 um, mils thick on top of a granular sub-base uh, on top of the subgrade. Uh, we use this for driveways uh, but also for motorways um, which have high traffic loadings. Uh, it will last longer but it costs much more to construct than flexible pavement or semi-rigid pavement. So just looking at flexible pavement, uh, you can see them here laying uh, the base course. Um, I wish I hadn't put this photo in because you can see the base course is actually spilling over the top. 
which is not good. Uh, what should happen there is you can see the, the trailer um, tailgate there is actually on a chain um, so it can only open a certain amount. The truck gets up a certain amount of speed then he tips his tra tailgate, it opens and this the um, aggregate pours out at a constant rate according to how fast he's driving. When things like this happen you're actually getting more on top than what you should have. The grade is just going to have to be shifting a little bit more material. With aggregate you don't really want to be moving it around too much because uh, every time you move it there's a certain amount of segregation between the sands and the coarse material. Uh, so you don't want to do too much. You don't want to be having to shift it around too much which is why when the trucks are uh, bringing the material to site they're actually laying it rather than just dumping it and letting the grader actually move them around. Uh, semi rigid pavement you can see there's a paving machine there this is um, you can see this is actually too thin this is probably just a, a surface layer there but you can see the paving machine trucks come along with the hot mix there tip it into this hopper and then the machine sort of lays it as it goes and you can see that there's a roller there rolling it and uh, as they go and rigid pavement uh, you can see it's basically just a concrete slab pouring operation so they've got form work up there some of them have a, a moving form so you can see that they're dumping the concrete out of a truck and they've got guys sort of um, screeding it and shaping it as they go so the sub base is the material between the uh, base course and the subgrade um, it does several things first of all it allows it distributes the load down to the subgrade uh, it prevents the intrusion of fines from the subgrade into the pavement structure itself um, generally lower quality materials um, sometimes not used and there's a picture of a sub base there uh, you can see that this is uh, two different types that's what it should look like that's too bony it, there's not enough fines in there the material should look like that when it's compacted down that there's no fines sort of holding it all together the way that the aggregate, the sub base and the base course work together is that there are different sized um, pieces of um, rock in there or gravel and sand and they're all locking together so the smaller bits fill the voids between the bigger bits providing a um, locking the big bits into place with this there's not the small fine bits there sort of locking it together um, so that's just going to um, come apart no time at all. This here is um, all nicely bound together and it's going to take quite a bit to, to unbind it. So base course is the top of the pavement. Um, you do spend a lot of time sort of shaping it all up. This is what's called a stone mosaic finish. This is what it should look like. A um, whole lot of fines with just the coarse material sort of poking out of the top of it. Um, it's all nicely bound together. Um, it's not going to come apart very quickly. So there's the base course there, you can see that they've laid it there and they've got a, um, a roller there sort of shaping it. Uh, the surface, the surface um, in New Zealand is either chip seal or AC. Um, and what it is, is you lay the, the, the bitumen and then you lay the chip on top of it. Uh, there are different types of, of seals. Um, you can have a two coat seal where you put down a coarse material then you put a, a smaller one in, in between. or a, first coat seal where you're just laying down one, one layer altogether. Uh, surfacing asphaltic concrete um, can either be laid straight onto the base course but more often than not you'll put down what's called a tack coat so you'll put down a bitumen layer and then you'll put this on top of it, the bitumen layer to provide a waterproof lining and to bind the AC into the um, base course. Um, you can see that they've got a paving machine there so the, there's the hopper in front there, they load it into the hopper and then the paving machine um, shapes it all up to the right thing, to the right shape and then you go along and roll it afterwards. So you can see there's a truck delivering the hot mix, there's a lot of um, kerosene coming off it, it's um, cut back with kerosene um, to make it workable, um, if it doesn't then it's, it's hard material. Um, when it actually solidifies, what's happened there is all the kerosene cutback has actually evaporated out, just leaving the bitumen itself. So the cutback kerosene makes it more viscous, allows you to actually work with it. 